The upgrade from symbols to components was a big announcement at Webflow Conference last year. However, since the launch, they've been plagued with a number of developer experience flaws that my friends in the Webflow community have been voicing their feedback about. Today, Webflow announced some usability updates that were much needed that I'm excited to share with you and explore in this video. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so we're in Webflow now and I have this features grid and I'm gonna make two components here. We're gonna make a component out of the full section and also each bullet row. So let's go ahead and we'll delete this one here and this feature two underscore feature class. We're gonna create a component out of that. We'll call it bullet row and go ahead and create. And now, okay, we've got this back to instance up here and this green showing us that we're editing the component itself. This is exactly what we had before, so nothing new yet. Now, if I click out, before I had to, to edit the component instance or every component across the page, I would have to option click to get into the edit mode. There's other options. You also have this little pencil icon right here that you can click, as well as the edit component button all the way up here. This was my workflow before was using that edit component button, but now we can just double click and we're editing the component. This will edit the component across all instances. So let me actually back out and I'll duplicate this and I'll go back, double click, I'm in edit mode. And now let's say I wanna change, you know, it doesn't make sense for all these to say primary major key. So this second one, I want this to say second. So I type second, but oops, it's editing across the whole site now. I'm in total component edit mode, editing everything. And if I had another page with this on it, it would be updating there too. So let's click out. And what I'm going to do is come back in and I'm going to select the element that I want to change across various components. So that's text size medium right here. And over in text block settings, I'm in the, in the setting panel over here, click this little purple circle dot, and I'm gonna create and connect a new property. We will call this bullet row heading. And let's add text at the end of that too, so create property. All right, so now we have a property, and if I click out and come back in, you can see we've got this kind of dashed line. This is showing us that we have a property that we can edit now, and it's the same in all these other ones. So this property is carrying across all of our components. So now if I come in here, uh, so this is already second, but let's change this first one back to first. Boom. So now that's changed there and it's not. And all I have to do is double click in here, third, oops, third, and this last one, fourth. So it kind of matters where I double click. If I double click, I single click here. And then if I double click on something with dash lines, then I'm going to edit the property. But if I double click the whole thing, now I'm editing the entire instance itself. So really key user interface updates here from Webflow. Uh, the other thing that was kind of tough was actually removing these earlier. It was the menu flow was, was quite rough. So we're editing the instance now. Let's see how to remove that. So over here in text block settings, I can see I just have this drop down here that yes, we are connected to the property, but I can also disconnect it or I can delete it. Um, if I go to property settings, let's see. We can change it from being multi-line. I don't think I want this to be multi-line. You know, it's a heading, so it's probably not going to span multiple lines. I can change the name of it, and I can set the text in here as well. So two places is to change the text, in the property settings or, uh, you know, by double-clicking on the designer itself. And we could manage all properties, and that takes us to the settings panel. And we have our manage properties over here where we could delete it. Deleting the property will disconnect it from one setting, so we delete. And now these all go back to second major key. Let me undo by pressing Control Z. And so we're back to where we were. And we kind of have a better understanding of how to manage our properties now. Uh, the other thing we might want to do is let's make this whole section into component. And I'll call this Features. And click Create. And now, OK, we've got our Features component. If I come to Navigator, back to Instance, we can see, yes, there's this Features component. And then once we're within the component, let me expand everything. Then we have bullet row, bullet row, bullet row, bullet row. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. And what I want to do is duplicate this whole thing. So we'll duplicate the whole feature section. And OK, so now we've got another component. But it doesn't really make much sense that this image is here. So let's make a property out of this image. We have image. And what we can do is, again, back to the purple dot, we'll click that. And we'll create a new property and we'll call this image and create property. And now when we click this gear icon, let's see, it has image here. We can go to property settings and replace our image this way. Or we can just click out of everything. So let me go back to the instance. 
And you can see there's that green dotted line around the image. It's kind of hard to see, but we can definitely see it if we zoom in a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to click, and when it's green, and I click the cog, and I click Replace Image, now I can add my own image to that. It's important to note that there's still only a couple properties that we can change across our components. If I go back into the Features component here, Show All Settings, and click Edit Component, then in Manage Properties, if I click Plus, we see all the different types of stuff that we can edit. Runtime Props and Slot, don't worry about these. These are related to DevLink, but we have Visibility, Video, Link, Image, and Rich Text and Text, which we've seen. Something you might want to do is have this second feature section actually be reversed. So to do that, we actually can't really do it with compo within the component. So we have to unlink our instance and then come back in here and just, uh, let's see, let's come to our grid layout and I'll just swap these. And now we've swapped them. You know, it's not a component anymore, so this one stays the same. But we come back down and what we can do now is right click, create a component, and we'll call this features uh, reversed. So that's a way that you could do that. Now, one problem I'm still running into with some larger builds with lots of components is that it does slow down the designer quite a bit. Are you experiencing that too? I'm curious to know. If you are, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.